Okay. Got Sonar 7. And I'm going to show you how I use it totally to make beats. Just using plugins and using Sonar as a sequencer and all the other good stuff. Um, basically, I make things easy for myself. I made videos kind of showing you how um, I set up Sonar the way it makes it easy for me to get started and just, you know, instead of having to try to set it up the way I want it every time I open it up. Um, basically, what I did was I opened up Sonar, go to new. Now, the default is called normal. The template for is called normal. And it's basically two audio um two audio tracks and two MIDI tracks. What I've done was I deleted those tracks and set it up the way I would want to set up every time I set up sonar mainly when I make beats. So and then when I did that I save it as normal. So now when I go to normal it's set up the way I want to set it up. Um I don't store the um, audio in the folder quite yet just because I don't know what the name of it what I wanted to be named so I hit OK and it's set up my synth rack is already up my loop is already up and I just leave it at 100 BPM just to start off with and I can just change it um, using tap tempo or whatever so once I have that and um, a lot of times I kind of have an idea what the BPM that I wanted be in um, let's say I wanted to be 90 I just click on it and use the uh, minus and plus to scroll up and down the tempo all right to pull up the synth rack is right here you can use that button right there or you can go to view synth rack or alternate 8 but again, I have it set up where as soon as I cut it on, it's already up. I don't have to even fool with that. Click the plus button, go to a synth. Um, let's see, where is it? And I'm not really trying to make a beat, I'm just kind of using just doing this just for demo purposes see if I use this so I like that sound I arm the track by the way the metronome and everything is, is set up for me already because like I said I set it up the way I want it like when I first um, started, just like the metronome is already on, everything's already on. The count in is one. That's how I like to do it. So I hit record. All right. Um, I could do quantize as I'm going in, so that way I wouldn't have to use a plug-in quantize. But for the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna. Use a plug in and leave it like that. All right, let's say um, I like that. What I like to do is go all the way out to the end. Cause you notice I didn't hold the key all the way out to the end. I zoom in and just pull it out. Slice it hidden by hidden S and deleting the extra. Then all I have to do is bounce down. Being that this is just a synthesizer and only can play one sound at a time. You can either go to edit bounce a track well I have a preset I have a uh, a key where I can just hit F8 and it'll bounce it down just hit OK I can bounce it down as mono or as stereo or split stereo I just just bounce it down to stereo then I unarm this track let's say I want to use this synthesizer again I click with inside the folder so that way I keep all my MIDI that's pertaining to the synthesizer within the folder. Like I can click, I can go down here 
and add a MIDI track, but then the MIDI track will be down here. I like to do it with inside this folder. See? So right click, and it stays in the folder. So anytime I'm, I'm finished with these MIDI tracks, I can just mute them and solo and freeze them all at the same time. And the thing is, if you notice, I, un, uh, I only mute this track until I finish setting up this one. So when I open the MIDI track, I go down and I choose my synthesizer that I want to use, which is this one. And then I mute it, because if I mute it before, the synthesizer would be muted, and then I have to unmute it and all that. Just It's better if you just wait until you set up the other MIDI track before you mute the, the, last, the first one you used. Hit record. And pick another sound. Once I like that, I just hit record. So let's say I like that. I solo it, bounce it down, and just keep it moving. I mean, let's just say now I got two self tracks. Let's say I just want to add something else. I just mute it up here because it'll mute all the tracks to that synth. Freeze it. And just load up another instrument and just keep doing that until I have my full beat. And that's pretty much in general how I make beats totally just with uh, plugins. And see, that way I can add, you know, effects to the audio tracks. I like to mess with audio tracks um, as far as, you know, um, adding effects. Because I could have done it. I could have added effects to the instrument. Like right here, the audio effects. Like, this is the way it sounds. I can add an audio effect. And, but I like to wait because if I do it this way, let's say I don't like the way this sounds. If I bounce it down, I'm stuck with it. But you bounce down the without the effects and then do it later, then that way it's non-destructive. So, but that's how I use Sonar, using totally nothing but plugins. All right, peace.